every new Indigo Disc DLC Pokemon, it's finally time to give them the business. Unfortunately, only 10 new specimens for me to ponder, even though most of them are just new forms. I still think it's fair to say they've made these 10 slots count. Pound for pound, a fairly beefy lineup the Turquoise Frisbee has conjured up for us. So it's time to be ranking the Hairy Tortoise along with all the other new DLC Pokemon. All of these Pokemon are at the bare minimum. They're decent, I would say. But you just can't help but be underwhelmed by the legendary final form, can you? Especially when we've been gassed up by this sketchbook for the past year about what the third legendary was going to be like. We've been gaslit once again by this thing. Thinking Terrapagos was going to be like Pokemon's equivalent to the mythical turtle that's currently holding up the planet we exist on, along with four mighty elephants. Obviously, it wasn't going to be planetary sized, but maybe like the very lowest part of Area Zero, you'd come to find out that you've been standing on the shell of a large and noble turtle. Just a small little boss fight sized piece of glittering land in the lower area. But I'm just not impressed, am I? The sketches made it seem so much more grandiose. That's how whelmed this final form has me. I'm breaking the seal on using words like grandiose for the first time in my life. I thought this would be the first time terrestrializing would actually make for a real form change. But it looks more like a weird Smash Bros trophy. It's one of them Dragon Ball statues with like five different Gokus chucked onto one. Yeah, the little fella on top sat there like an amiibo. The disc below, and I guess this dome at the end so the disc's floating about on its own little planet. I can't tell if it looks like a dangerous ride at one of those fairgrounds that randomly spawn on the field nearest to your house in the summer. Or if it's the airbrushed paintings you'd see on the back of those dangerous rides along with Lara Croft and Morpheus at the very least least the boss fight itself it did give me a mean spanking I've gotta say for my team at least anyway it just wasn't built for this felt like its moveset was tailor made to give me the belt i finally understood why it's called the stellar form because it's beating me like i was married to it Iron Crown may just be another cold, metallic, soulless tin can from Violet, but that's just it. Iron Cobalion is looking cold, like it front the reindeers for Iron Bundle's annual purge day as Robot Santa, shifting pogo sticks to grapple locks. So it has to be lower down on the list for me here, because I just know how me and my fickle brain operate. And right now, it's running on the same wavelength as a moth with nothing to lose. I'm really just drawn to those bright lights on his head. This potentially could have been as dead as Iron Leaf, Iron Grass, whatever he is. But the light up antlers, they go a long way here. Cobalion is already elite looking. You can't go too wrong making a neon light up gamer pad, Cobalion. But there's no relation to Cobalion, is there? Parallel step, whatever he is. It's only a cutting edge weapon shaped like a Cobalion. Iron Crown and Cobalion. Completely different box of frogs, mate. So when I finally get around to designing this Grapple Lock shirt I've been wanting to sort out for ages, if those Machamps and black suits from Nintendo come knocking, boys, boys, it's just a big misunderstanding. Mine is just coincidentally shaped like a Grapple Lock. That could be any Jiu-Jitsu Cephalopod. I'm about like 80% sure Paradox Entei is another win for the Scarlet side. Maybe, maybe 70. I can't tell if it's just missing that little bit of spice. And you know Entei needs a bit of the good smell. Fravor. Fravor. I can't, I don't know if I do that. I can't roll my eyes. Your man isn't a bad design. It too closely resembles Entei in the first place for it to be terrible. But I think that's the issue I'm finding. It doesn't fully feel like a primal Pokemon in the same way the other Johto legends do. Even though I do think it's growing on me at an alarming rate. But when I look at Gouging Fire, I don't necessarily think. Look at this fearsome beast. I think when Skuldengo busting out a McTwist on that quarter pipe of a forehead, this looks more like Entei got painted and dressed up for a neon jungle party in Thailand. Like Entei got chucked in a cartoon dust cloud fight at a pride rally. The other two are just looking much more prehistoric, especially the smooth brain Suicune. From looks alone, you just know you could shake its head and it have the same consistency as a snow globe. Compared to those two, this really is just an Entei with his name 
nails done did and a hot plate installed on his forehead. A bit unnecessary. You'd think Entei was already equipped for the services a hot plate would provide one with. I reckon the guy could deep fry a Voltorb if it rubbed it between his thighs hard enough. Like strapping a high pressure jet washer to the underbelly of a Blastoise. Maybe it should have leaned more into being some kind of Ceratop based creature. But even then I'm not mad about them putting the main focus on pumping Entei up with a full tank of diesel. Bulked up like the lion it probably should have been this whole time. Getting too swole for the ankle bracelets. Snapping them off like the Hulk's clothes except for, except for, except for the good bit. Making Entei look less like a furry Great Dane. Base form Entei is like one common ancestor away from solving mysteries. No wonder he's a Roman legend. He lives in the back of a van. A Terrakion modified by an evil organization. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Makes you wonder what kind of insane evil teams they have out there in the future. Probably just a bunch of goons called Iron Rocket being led by Giovanni, looking like a Cyberman dressed in Armani, who now goes by Iron John. They didn't need to go for all that effort. Don John, he was looking iron enough present day. Iron Boulder, it really makes you think. Jesus, just how much tricep meat was Terrakion hosting to be 200 pounds heavier than its metal boulder counterpart. You know, it's fairly low ranked here, but I'm actually not mad about it. I'm down with the orange, black, and greys it's got going on. The guy's looking fresh. Quite literally a big baller, and its signature move is a digital shovel. He's like a high-vis jacket Jedi. Terrakion in the future gets a good trade under its belt. I reckon it gets all of them. Becomes the all-in-one high-vis jacket man. Oh, ah, machines come Coming in, taking our jobs. Cashing in, mate. Any job. Iron boulders, you man. Sparky. Construction. Interior design. I'll stick a paintbrush in his mouth and stick enough cash in hand and he'll have your living room ceiling looking like the Sistine Chapel. It's a shame the stellar form was near enough just chucking the first two forms onto an egg. Because on their own, the first two forms, they're looking pretty calm. I didn't think I'd end up caring about the little fellow form more than the complete dream that sketchbook sold me on. But you see him hop out of the little general shell, start making his way towards you. I was sold instantly. Surely this chaos emerald turtle is friend and not foe. I was loving it till Kieran decided to pelt a master ball straight at it. Just for even thinking about looking in my direction. I can't help it. I'm the main character. I didn't choose this. Don't know why he's so pressed. Well, what's the issue here? What's going on? I had a great space reserved in box 29, all nice and warm for him right next to Ogapon. It's a shame he doesn't stick about too long. The wee man shifts right into flight mode the second it detects any beef. Anything even remotely kicks off and he's folding himself in like one of them UFO balls. If you manage to flip him over, I reckon he'd make for a regulation standard Beyblade bowl. You know, I thought it'd be a fair bit larger than an actual toy Beyblade bowl. I didn't think it'd be literally the size of a disc. I thought that was just like a quirky nickname for it. Even then, it, this isn't even the Indigo disc. The Indigo disc is like a DVD that Gita gives you. I reckon you could fit that bad boy into a GameCube. It's so hairy, yet so soothing. It's setting off the suicidal moth instincts in my brain to be drawn to bright lights. It's like everything I loved about Iron Crown's aesthetic on a compact CD. Just look at the fluorescent turquoise radiating from this ultimate frisbee. I can't look away. It's like something you'd hallucinate from going insane floating about after Joe Rogan locks you in his isolation tank. Juralodon did always seem a bit unfinished to me. Not even like it's a middle stage evolution. It felt more like if a stage 2.5 Pokemon could exist. Like it's halfway done evolving from the middle stage, but got stuck in that Animorph in between frame just before it could reach the final form. I figured looking like a lighter in its first form, it would have hailed from like Slovakia, but Archer Luden evolved to show off its capitalist American genes. Had no idea it had such red, white, and blue roots, brother. It's a good thing no one knew it's been American this whole time, or the G-Max 4 might have had a few planes crash into it. Wasn't sure what to make of Archer Luden at first. Why did they make Duraludon evolve into an office job transformer who morphs into a staple remover? But it's actually more the Megatron kind that just straight transforms into an unregistered firearm. Just a 
full on rail gun. He can't not give him some creativity points for that. And he doubles up as a fold away mattress for when you have Orthworm over for the night. You get a few hundred of them on a field, like, you know, one of them golden retriever meetups. You link them all together. You've got the world's biggest Hot Wheels track on your hands. There may be very few new Pokemon introduced with these expansions, but they make them count. They're at least higher effort thought process wise. And it shows with one like this how they are really making up for the lack of true giraffe content in pocket monsters. We'd have to settle for short King Giraffe Rig and I guess, I don't know, Tropius being this kind of half and half variation until this generation. I found out about Raging Bolt from someone at me on Twitter. So I thought it was a joke. If someone was having a bit of a goof. There was no way they've installed Raikou with a travel pillow. I, I'd like to say fairly assumed only a meme account could have done this. Well, he is a Roman legendary. The guy travels a lot for work. If he wants to make life on the road a bit more snug, you know, more power to him. Although I'm sure his belly is full of the stuff, full of power. Couldn't possibly have another bite of that power, seeing as nature deemed it dangerous enough for its fur to be the first known instance of hazard tape. It's both the safety and the danger. It's like putting a wet floor sign on a Kyogre. Once I clocked the official Nintendo seal of approval was on the underside of its boot somewhere, I thought the general response would be a collective grilling. It seemed like a very easy, unanimous, it's just stupid, well, what are you doing? But look, I think you were all too quick on the draw, at least when that trailer dropped. You've always got to give it some time to settle. Pokemon are just weird in the 3D angle sometimes. You gotta lay off Rage and Bolt a bit, and most of us humans don't even look great in 3D. You might be a bit too quick on the draw to mock the long neck, but it's easily the most creative out of the legendary Paradox redesigns. It makes sense to be all the way up there to host the thundercloud it has. What isn't to love about this? Dynamic color palette? Lightning Bolt mustache? Oh, come on now. Now this, gamers, this is epic. The guy is called Ragin, arguably a tier higher than fuming. Installed him with a mane that lets him scream into the pillow. He can swear as much as he wants. Get all of your slurs out of the way. Get him out of your system now with that noise cancelling mane. A nice little stowaway for when he's all grumpy. As soon as this little freak got data mined, I knew it was checking off the aesthetic boxes for me. I'm a sucker for purple. I'm a turbo sucker for little ghoulish goblin creatures. Then you go and making this little cult leader, a mythical poison ghost who specializes in assembling henchmen to do all his gooning for him. I mean, he's a made man. He doesn't even need the henchmen to do his gooning for him. He's got his own little portable goon chamber. From the leaks, it was easy to assume he's the one who gave the loyal three their poison powers. So I was right. I think everyone was. This fella is the little ringleader. I just didn't know to what extent it was gonna be. I didn't think they were gonna make the subjugation Pokemon. What a title to hold. It sounds like a mid-2000s wrestling pay-per-view. This Sunday on pay-per-view, TNA subjugation. Kurt Angle is a Samoa Joe and it's an insane title to hold as a Pokemon, considering that Pokeballs are effectively subjugation devices. It's surprised you don't fight him in the epilogue like a Dark Souls boss. I activate Petrarant, the subjugator. If I were this little berry locked away in his little portable goon chamber, commanding powerful trainers, it's a good game plan. It's not the best game plan though. I'd do it a bit differently. Imagine this end scene, but instead of like just a generic NPC horde, it's just an army of the greediest, fattest bastards in all our Pokemon. Just a beefy army of rotund, stout men. The ones who just can't say no to a little snack. Snorlaxes, cheat damer champs. You just know x Cloud has zero say in whether or not the Mochi's going down him. So many Pokemon would fold in the face of food. Most of them would be like an untrained Basset Hound staring down a bucket of KFC. At that point, it's mandatory. Your brain might as well be hooked up to nodes like an Unreal Engine code. Petrarant watch the Jimmy Neutron movie and was like, Hey, you know, yeah, I, I can have a good crack at that. Having the powers of subjugation just to make an entire town chicken dance. Fair play to him. It's the most amount of emotion a Pokemon NPC has probably shown since Mystery Dungeon. A banger mythical. Awakened by a rare berry every few years just to get a whole region pinging off edibles. It just spiked an entire nation for a quick laugh. <laughs> We all knew Diplin wasn't done. Predicting double Diplin, it wasn't another one of my observation hacky feats. It seemed more 
I, I don't know, like a common sense feat. I thought we all knew this was coming. You didn't have to be rigging up alarms for r slash Poke League posts waiting for the confirmation. The Diplin was already getting buzzed off Eevee lights before Hydrapple was even a thing. But once he did spawn, is exactly what I'd hoped for. The Hydra. What a weapon. Five whole heads. I just wish they'd stay out all the time and not just the main one. They could take out an entire execute in one singular collective bite. My mistake, I must have miscounted. There's apparently seven serpents living inside. I guess those two legs at the back are just permanently there. They must just take shifts on and off to keep themselves fresh. So it could scram a whole rack of phalanx too with a head spare to take a swig of beer. I can see why its speed is only 44. Having to mentally and physically align seven different minds. Getting into arguments simply trying to walk down the street like an eternal three-legged race. Right, that is it. One of you is pulling your weight. Come on, go on. Which one is, is it? Who's pretending? All right, because I'm lifting the whole apple right now. I told you, if you want to make it time for McDonald's brekkie, we've all got to hop together. They'd have to learn chemistry, like synchronized rowing, just to hop anywhere properly. If I were the head hydra in command, I'd be ordering the lower ranks to walk me about like an omnidroid. I already think Appleton is a banger, but Hydra Apple is next level. Applin is such an interesting specimen to have this much genetic potential from a worm living in a one-bed apartment fruit. Went from that to a seven-man penthouse. Seven times the amount of bodies it started with. They must have been getting all sorts of freaky inside that diplin. Oh, so Hydrapple. Hey, how's it going? Um, how, I was going to ask, how did how did you reach this form from Diplin? No, oh, it's, uh, you know, I learned Dragon Cheer, I leveled up, and, uh, did I, did I, did I, you know? No, no, I don't know. What's that? Did I, did I, did I? What's, no, because to me, it sounds like, did I, did I, did I, is, is you and your little worm friends using the inside of your body like a, 1970s bathhouse. <laughs> no, no, it's just, you know, did I, did I, did I, you know, it's, you know, don't worry about it. I don't even care. I say, let them have at it. On guard, whatever, because Hydrapple is a banger.